Donald, you're about a day and a half early. And the doctor canceled. Canceled? How did you get in? Well, the street door was open. Want a drink? Not until I've had my shower. I want something to work out today. I want to try to relax and enjoy something. Are you in a blue funk? Because of the doctor? Christ, no. I was depressed long before I got there. Well, why did the prick cancel? A virus or something. He looked awful. Well, this ought to cheer you up. I went shopping today and bought all kinds of goodies. Sandalwood soap? Oh, I feel better already. Your very own little toothbrush, because I'm sick to death of you using mine. Well, how do you think I feel? And also for you. Something called control. Now, notice, nowhere on the label is it called hairspray. You simply control. And the words for men are written about 37 times all over the goddamn can. It's called butch assurance. <laughs> well, it's still hairspray, no matter if they call it balls. It's all going on your very own little shelf, which is to be labeled Donald's Saturday Night Douche Kit. Oh, by the way, you spending the night? Nope, I'm driving back. I still get very itchy when I'm in this town too long. I'm not that well yet. You say that every weekend. Maybe after about 10 more years of analysis, I'll be able to stay one night. Well, maybe after about 10 more years of analysis, you'll be able to move back to town permanently. If I live that long. You will. If you don't kill yourself on the Long Island Expressway some early Sunday morning. I will never know how you can tank up on martinis and still get back to the Hamptons in one piece. Well, believe me, it's easier than getting here. Hmm? Ever had an anxiety attack at 60 miles an hour? <laughs> well, tonight I was beside myself to get to the doctor. Yeah. And just as I finally make it, rush in, throw myself on the couch and vomit out how depressed I am, he says, Donald, I have to cancel tonight. I'm just too sick. Well, why didn't you tell him you're sicker than he is? He already knows that. Well, why didn't the prick call you and cancel? Suppose you're driven all this way for nothing. Oh, Michael, why do you keep calling him a prick? I've never heard of an analyst having a two-hour session with a patient on Saturday evening. He simply prefers to take Mondays off. Oh, works late Saturdays and takes Mondays off. What is he, a psychiatrist or a hairdresser? Oh, actually, he's both. He shrinks my head and combs me out. <laughs> Besides, I had to come in town to a birthday party anyway, right? You had to remind me. If there's one thing I'm not ready for, it's five screaming queens singing happy birthday. Oh, who's coming? Oh, they're all Harold's friends, really. It's his birthday. And I want everything to be just the way he'd want it. I don't want to have to listen to him catch about how nobody ever does anything for anybody but themselves. <laughs> Himself. <laughs> I think you know everybody anyway. It's the same old tired fairies you've seen around since the day one. Actually, there'll be seven. Counting Harold and you and me. Are you calling me a screaming queen or a tired fairy? <laughs> I beg your pardon. There'll be six tired screaming fairy queens. And one anxious queer. <laughs> Michael, what? you don't think Harold will mind my being here, do you? Technically, I'm your friend, not his. Well, if she doesn't like it, she can twirl on it. Look, I'll be out of your way in one second. I've just got one more thing to do here. The surgery, so early in the evening. Sunt, that's French, with a sedilla. <laughs> I've just got to comb my hair again for the 37th time. Hair, that's singular. My hair, without exaggeration, is clearly falling on the floor, baby, and fast. Oh, you're totally paranoid. You've got plenty of hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you see before you is a masterpiece of deception. My hairline starts about here. All this is just tortured forward. <laughs> well, I hope for your sake no strong wind comes up. <laughs> well, if one does, I'll be in terrible trouble. I will then have a bald head and shoulder-length fringe. Here, look. Oh. Not good, huh? Well, not the greatest. It's called getting old. Well, there's one thing to be said for masturbation. You certainly don't have to look your best. <laughs> what are you so depressed about? Other than the usual everything, I mean. Oh, Michael, I really don't want to get into it. Well, if you're not going to tell me, how can we have a conversation in depth? A warm, rewarding, meaningful friendship. Up yours. By Captain Butler, how you talk. It's just that today I finally realized that I was raised to be a failure. I was groomed for it. You know, there was a time once when you could have said that to me and I wouldn't have known what the hell you were talking about. Well, naturally, it all goes back to Evelyn and Walt. Naturally. When doesn't it go back to Mom and Pop? Unfortunately, we all had an Evelyn and a Walt. The crumbs. <laughs> Don't you love that word? Crumbs. I love it. It's a real Barbara Stanwyck word. Call me a camp, you crumb. Well, I see that all vestiges of sanity for this evening are now officially shot to hell. Well, Donald. You're so serious this evening. You're fun, star, baby. And I'm eating for two. Forget your troubles. Come on, get happy. Oh, you better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah. Come on, get happy. You be... What's more boring than a queen doing a Judy Garland imitation? <laughs> a queen doing a Betty Davis imitation. <laughs>
Meanwhile, back at the Evelyn and Walt syndrome. Oh, America's square peg and America's round hole. Christ, how sick analysts must get of hearing how Mama and Daddy made their darling into a fairy. <laughs> it's beyond just that now. Today, I finally began to see how some of the other pieces of the puzzle relate to them. You know, like, uh, why I never finished anything I started in my life. <laughs> my neurotic compulsion to not succeed. You know, I realized it was always when I failed that Evelyn loved me the most. Because it displeased Walt, who, who wanted perfection. And when I fell short of the mark, she was only too happy to make up for it with her love. So I, I began to identify failing with winning my mother's love. And I, I began to fail on purpose in order to get it. Well, I, I didn't finish Cornell. I couldn't keep a job in this town. I, I simply retreated to a room over a garage and scrubbing floors in order to keep alive. You know, failure is the only thing with which I feel at home because, well, because it's what I was taught at home. Killer whales is what they are. Killer whales. How many whales could a killer whale kill? A lot, especially if they got them when they were babies. Where are you going? Make drinks. I think we need about 37. Michael, where did you get that sweater? Oh, from this clever little shop on the right bank called Hermes. <laughs> I work my ass off for 45 lousy dollars a week scrubbing floors, and you waltz around throwing cashmere sweaters on. The one on the floor in the bedroom is Vacuna. Uh, I beg your pardon. And you could get a job doing something else, you know. Nobody's holding a gun to your head to be a charwoman. That is how you say you're neurosis. <laughs> Gee, and I thought it's why I was born. Besides, just because I wear expensive clothes does not necessarily mean they're paid for. <laughs> well, that is how you say you're neurosis. Well, I'm a spoiled brat, so what do I know about maturity? The only thing mature means to me is Victor Mature, who was in all those pictures with Betty Grable. I can't begin to tell you how much you mean to me. Oh, <laughs> Betty sang that in 1945. 45 or 43? No, no, 43 was Coney Island, which was remade in the 50s, Wabash Avenue. Yeah, 45 was the Dolly Sisters. Well, how did I manage to miss these momentous events in the American cinema? <laughs> you know, I can understand people having an affinity for the stage, mm -hmm. but. Well, movies are such garbage, who can take them seriously? Well, I'm sorry if your sense of art is offended. Odd as it may seem, there was no Schubert Theater in Hot Coffee, Mississippi. However, thanks to the silver screen, your neurosis has got style. It takes a certain flair to squander one's unemployment check at Pavillon. <laughs> What's so snappy about being head over heels in debt? The only thing smart about it is the clever way I elude the bill collectors. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, you're the type that gives faggots a bad name. <laughs> you, Donald, you are a credit to the homosexual. You're a conscientious, reliable, floor-scrubbing, bill-paying fag who don't owe nothing to nobody. I am a model fairy. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's just nifty. Now, I've always flitted from Beverly Hills, to Acapulco, to Rome, to Amsterdam, picking up a lot of one-night stands and a lot of custom-made duds along the trail. Well, I'm here to tell you that the only place in all those miles, the only place I've ever been happy was on the goddamn plane. You bored with Scandinavia? Try Greece. Fed up with dark meat? Try light. Hey, tequila. What about slip of it? Tired of boys? What about girls? Or what about boys and girls mixed? And in what combination? And if you're sick of people, what about poppers or pot or pills or the hard stuff? And can you think of anything else the bad baby would like to indulge his spoiled, rotten, stupid, boring, empty, vacant, stuffy, self-centered self in? Is that what you think that style, Donald? Is that what you think you've missed out on? My hysterical escapes from country to country, party to party, bar to bar, bed to bed. Hangover to hangover, and all of it hand to mouth. Run, charge, run, squander, run, beg. Run, run, run. Waste, waste, waste. And why? <laughs> and why? Why, Michael? Why? I really don't want to get into it. Well, then how can we have a conversation in Dell? Well, you know it all by heart anyway. Same song, second verse. Because my Evelyn refused to let me grow up. She was determined to keep me a child forever. And she did one hell of a job of it. <laughs> and my Walt stood by and let her do it. What you see before you is a 30-year-old infant. And it was all done in the name of love. Well, what she labeled love. And I suppose, sincerely believed to be love, when what she was really doing was feeding her own loneliness, satisfying her own needs. She used to bathe me in the same tub with her until I finally got too big for the both of us to fit. She made me sleep in the same bed with her until I was 14 years old. Until I finally flatly refused to spend one more night there. And do you know, to this day, she still says, 
I don't care if you're 70 years old. You'll always be my baby. And can I tell you how that drives me mad? <laughs> when will that bitch realize what I will always be is her son? And I haven't been her baby for 25 years. And don't get me wrong. I know, it's terribly easy to cop out and blame Evelyn and Walt for everything and say that we were just their helpless, put-upon victims. But I've dropped enough dough on the couch to know that in the end, you're responsible for yourself. I suppose. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I want to believe it. But in their own pathetic, dangerous way, they just loved us too much. Fini. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing quite as good as feeling sorry for yourself, is there? Nothing. No. I adore cheap sentiment. <laughs> Will you stop? <laughs> okay, I'm taking orders for drinks. What'll it be? An extra dry deep heater martini on the rocks. Oh, with a twist. Coming up. If you're a magic chum, pack up your duck and gun to a full cup. Go throw away your pack and put your cares in hot and up. Backstage, new moon. Alan. Alan? My God, how are you? Where are you? <laughs> in town. Great, when'd you get in? Yeah. Is Fran with you? Oh. What, tonight? Oh, no. No, no, tonight's no good for me. No, I'm afraid I'm tied up tonight. Hmm? What you mean now? Oh, uh, well, um, Alan, old buddy, well, you see, it's a friend's birthday, and I'm having some people in for dinner. What? <laughs> no, 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 you wouldn't call it a birthday party, exact. Well, yeah, really, I suppose you would. I mean, what else would you call it? A wake, maybe. No, I'm sorry, kiddo, but I'm afraid I can't ask you to join us. I'm afraid it just wouldn't work out. Uh, no, uh, no, Alan, it's not place cards or anything. It's just a party. Oh, well, I'd hate to see you for just ten minutes. Why don't we have a drink tomorrow? Hello? Alan? Alan, what's the matter? Alan, are you crying? Alan, what's wrong? Well, look, Al Alan. Alan, look, come on over. Oh, no, no, it's perfectly okay. Just hurry, uh, come on over and have a drink, okay? Look, are you all right? Okay. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, same old address. Right. Okay, then, I'll see you in a minute. Right. Okay, bye-bye. <clears throat> well, am I stunning? You're absolutely stunning. You look like shit, but I'm absolutely stunned. And your grapes are, how you say, sour. Listen, you won't believe what just happened. Oh, where's my drink? Hmm? Oh, I didn't make it. I've been on the phone. My old roommate from Georgetown just called. Oh, Alan, uh, what's his name? McCarthy. Hmm. He's up here from Washington on business or something. And he's on his way over here. Well, I hope he knows the lyrics to Happy Birthday. Listen, asshole, what am I going to do? He's straight. Square City. I mean, he's really terribly proper, awfully good family. Oh, that's so important. I mean, his family looks down on people in the theater. So what do you think he's going to feel about this freak show I got booked in for dinner? Christ, is that good? Oh, uh, you want some crack crab? Mm. Not, just, not just yet. Well, why'd you invite him over? Well, I didn't. He invited himself. He said he had to see me tonight. Immediately. He really lost his spring on the telephone. He started crying. Or maybe he's feeling sorry for himself, too. No, really. Great heaves and sobs. Boo-hoo-hoo time. And that's not his style at all. I mean, he's so goddamn pulled together, he wouldn't show any emotion that he was in a plane crash. <laughs> Oh, what the hell do you care what he thinks? Well, I don't, really. Well, are just... you suddenly ashamed of your friends? Donald, you are the only person I know whom I'm truly ashamed. Now, look, some people do have different standards from yours and mine, you know. And if we don't acknowledge them, then we're just as narrow-minded and backward as we think they are. Uh, you know what you are, Michael? You're a real person. Thank you, and fuck you. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> no, thanks. I mean, how could you ever have been friends with a bore like that? <laughs> well, believe it or not, there was a time in my life when I didn't go around announcing that I was a faggot. <laughs> well, that must have been before speech replaced sign language. Now, don't give me any static on that score. I did not come out until after I'd graduated from college. Oh, well, it seems to me the first time we tricked, we met in a gay bar on 3rd Avenue during your junior year. Oh, cunt. Oh, I thought you'd never say it. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want some crack crab? Oh, not yet, if you don't mind. Well, I can only be getting colder. Oh, what time is it? I don't know, early. Mm. Where the hell is Alan? Oh, um, do you want some more club soda? What? Well, there's nothing but club soda in that glass. It's not gin like mine. You want some more? 
<laughs> I've been watching you for several Saturdays now. You've actually stopped drinking, haven't you? And smoking, too. Oh, and smoking, too. How long's it been? Five weeks. Oh, that's amazing. I found God. It is amazing for you. Where's God dead? Yes, thank God. <laughs> and don't get panicky just because I'm paying you a compliment. You know, I can always tell the difference. You have always said that I held my liquor better than anybody you ever saw. I can always tell when you were getting high one way. Mm. I'd get hostile. Now, well, you seem happier or something now. That shows. Thanks. Oh, what made you stop? The analyst? Well, he certainly had a lot to do with it. But mainly, I just didn't think I could survive another hangover, that's all. <laughs> I don't think I could get through one more morning after Rick attack. Morning after what? X, you know. Anxiety. Guilt. <laughs> Unfathomable guilt. Either real or imagined. From that split second, when your eyes pop open and you say, my God, what did I do last night? And then, suddenly, zap. Total recall. Tell me about it. And then the coffee, aspirin, Alka-Seltzer, Darvon, Daprosol, and a quick call to IA. X Anonymous. Oh, good morning, IA. Hi, was I too bad last night? Did I do anything awful? I wasn't too terrible, was I? How many times? How many times? Well, there's a struggle to survive until lunchtime, when you have a double Bloody Mary. That is, if you've waited till lunch, and by then you're half pissed and useless for the rest of the afternoon, and the only sure cure is to go to bed for about 37 hours. <laughs> and whoever does that. So, instead, you hang on till cocktail time, and by then you're ready for what the evening may hold, which hopefully is another party where the whole goddamn cycle starts all over again. Well, <laughs> I've been on that merry-go-round long enough, and I either had to get off or die of centrifugal force. Well, yeah, just how does a clear head stack up with the dull fog of alcohol? Well, all those things you've always heard are true. Nothing can compare with the experience of your faculties functioning at their natural maximum capacity. The only thing is, I'd kill for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Joe College has finally arrived. And suddenly I've got such icks. <laughs> Oh, now look, Donald, when he gets Oh, here, Michael, don't time. insult me by giving me any lecture on acceptable social behavior. I promise to sit with my legs spread apart and keep my voice in a deep register. Donald, you are a real card-carrying cunt. <laughs> All right, this is a raid. Everyone's under arrest. Hi, darling. Connie Cathero. Oh, Mary, don't ask. Hello, Emery. Put that in the kitchen. <laughs> hi, Hank. Hi, uh, hi, Who is this exotic woman over here? Oh, hi, Emery. <laughs> My dear, I thought you'd perished. Where have you been hiding your classically chiseled features? Well, I don't live in the city anymore. Yeah, right. Where's yours, Emery? It's arriving later. Larry? Larry! What? Give Michael the gift. Oh, here. Louder, so my mother in Philadelphia can hear you. Well, you were just standing there in a trance, weren't you? Uh, I think you both know Donald. Oh, sure, nice to see you. Hi. Nice hi. to meet you. Oh, I thought you'd met. Well, well, we haven't exactly met, but we've... But hi, you're what? Hi. Seen each other before. Well, that sounds murky. Oh, you've seen each other, but you haven't met. Now, what was wrong with the way I said it? Where? I think they're going to have their first fight. The first one since we got out of the taxi. Where did you find this trash? Downstairs leaning against the lamppost. <laughs> with an orchid behind my ear and big red lips painted over the lip line. Just like Maria Montez. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> what have you got against Maria? She was a good woman. <laughs> oh, look, I nearly forgot. Everybody, Emery, um... Look, this old college friend of mine is in town, and he's on his way over here for a quick drink on his way to dinner someplace. But now look, he's straight. Straight? Oh, if he's the one I met, he's about as straight as the yellow brick road. No, 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 no. You met Justin Stewart. I don't remember meeting anybody named Justin Stewart. Well, of course you don't. Dope, I met him. Well, this is somebody else. Alan McCarthy, a very close total stranger. Now, it's not that I care what he thinks about me, really. It's just that he's not ready for it, and he never will be. You understand that, don't you, Hank? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, do you honestly believe he doesn't know about you? Well, there's the slightest suspicion. He's never let on one bit. What's he had? A lobotomy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was super careful when I was in college, and I still am whenever I'm around him. I don't know why, but I am. Tilt. Now, that may seem like a crock of shit to you, Donald, but I'm certain to him we were close friends. The closest. To pop the balloon now just wouldn't be fair. Isn't that right? Whatever's fair. Right, and if that's phony of me, Donald, then that's phony of me and make something of it. I pass. Well, even you have to admit that it's much easier to deal with the world according to its rules and then go ahead and do what you damn well please. You do understand that, don't you? Well, now that you put it in layman's terms... <laughs> well, anyway, when I was in college, I was just like Alan. Very large in the dating department. I wore nothing but those constipated Ivy League clothes and those ten-pound cordovan shoes. <laughs> no offense, Hank. Quite all right, quite all right. Well, I butched it up quite a bit. And I didn't think I was lying to myself either. I honestly thought I was straight. Who do you have to fuck to get a drink around here? Would you lie somewhere? <laughs> well, I thought I thought I was straight. I know damn well I did not come out until after I'd graduated from college. Well, what about all those weekends up from school? Well, I still wasn't out. I was still in the Christ was I drunk last night syndrome. Oh, what? 
the Christ was I drunk last night syndrome, you know, when you made it with some guy at school. <laughs> and the next morning, when you had to face each other, there was always a lot of shit kicking crap about, man, was I drunk last night. <laughs> Christ, I don't remember a thing. <laughs> you were just guilty because you were Catholic, that's all. <laughs> that is not true. The Christ was I drunk last night syndrome knows no religion. It has to do with immaturity. Although, I will admit there's a high percentage of it among Mormons. Trollop. <laughs> oh, somehow we all managed to justify our actions in those days. Why, later, I found out that Justin Stewart, my closest friend, was Other doing... Other than Alan McCarthy. ...was doing the same thing. Only he was going up to Boston for weekends. <laughs> Sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Long before Justin or I, or God knows how many came out, we used to get drunk and horse around quite a bit. You see, in the Christ Was I Drunk Last Night syndrome, you really are drunk. That much of it's true. It's just that you do remember everything. Oh, Christ. I used to have to get drunk before I could go into a gay bar. <laughs> well, times certainly have changed. They have. Lately, I've gotten to despise the bars. Everybody's standing around and standing around. It's like one eternal intermission. Sounds familiar. No, oh, I can't stand the bars either. All that cat and mouse business. Mm. You hang around staring at each other all night and wind up going home alone. And pissed. Yeah. yeah, well, a lot of guys have to get loaded before they can have sex. Oh, um, so I've been told. <laughs> Donald, if you recall, the first time we made it, I was so loaded I could hardly stand up. You were so loaded, you could hardly get it up. <laughs> Christ, I was so drunk, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, bullshit, you remember. <laughs> Just friends, lovers, no more. You might as well be. Everyone thinks you are anyway. Uh, well, we never were, really. No, we didn't have time to be. We got to know each other too fast. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, that must be Alan. Oh, now look, everybody, do me a favor and cool it for the few minutes he's here. Okay? Anything for assist, Mary? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about, Emery. No camping. Sorry. You think the Giants are going to win a pennant this year? <laughs> Fucking A, <laughs> Max. <laughs> hey, Bernard! Ah, it's only another queen. And it ain't the red one, either. <laughs> it's the queen of spades. Emery, <laughs> Here, Bernard, uh, was the front door open when you came in? It was, but I closed. Oh, good. No, 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 baby, I'll take these. Um, put your present with the others, will you? Hi, Bernard. Right to the Larry. end. Here, Donald, Hi, play bar. Oh, will you? oh, sure. Hello, Donald. It's good to see you. Hello, Hello. Hi, Bernard. How are you? Alan? Hi, Bernadette. Anyone ever tell you you'd look divine in a hammock surrounded by louvers and ceiling fans and loads and loads of lush tropical fern? You're such a fag. You take the cake. <laughs> what about the cake? Whose job was that? It's mine. I ordered one to be delivered. How many candles did you say to put on it, 80? What? Look, I can't hear. There's too much noise in here. I'm going to the other phone. Hang on. How am I going to the cake cup? No. Hey, what's up? Uh, Why not? May I use a private line? Sure, go ahead. Oh, uh, look, everybody, there's some crack crab there. Just help yourself. Well, well is everybody right. ready for a drink? Huh? Ready? I'll be your topless cocktail waitress. Please, bear us the sight of your sagging tits. Mm -hmm. Yes, Alan. Alan kid. A vodka and tonic. Could I have the number for the Marseille Bakery in Manhattan? A vodka and tonic and a... Is there any beer? Beer? Who has beer before dinner? Beer drinker. Oh, that's telling him. <laughs> Don't be silly, Alan. That's how you apologize for Maybe that. truck drivers do, or wallpapers, but not school teachers. They have sherry. Oh, yeah? Well, this one has beer. Maybe school teachers in public schools. How can a sensitive artist like you live with such an insensitive bull like that? I can't. Emory, you'd live with Hank in a minute if he'd ask you in 58 seconds. Lord knows you're sensitive. Why don't you have a piece of watermelon and hush up? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Here you go, Hank. Oh, thanks. Oh, shit, they don't answer. Emory, what are you having? A pink lady. A vodka martini on the rocks, please. What? Well, it's just hope. Yeah. yeah, lunch tomorrow would be great. Uh, one o'clock? In the oak room with the flowers okay with you? Donald, any new libraries lately? Oh, one or three. I did the complete works of Doris Lessing this week. I've been depressed. Look, Alan, forget it, will you? You must not work in circulation anymore, Bernard. Oh, I'm still there every day. Uh, oh, well, since I moved, I only come in on Saturday evenings. Well, so looks like you got stocked up there for the week. Are you kidding? That'll last him two days. It'll last me two years. I still haven't finished Atlas Shrugged, which I started in 1912. <laughs> He's not coming. It's just as well now. Some people eat, some people drink, some take dough. I read. Uh, and read and read and read. It's a wonder to me that your eyes don't turn back in your head at the sight of a dust jacket. Well, at least he's a constructive escapist. Yeah, what do I do? Take planes? No, no, I don't do that anymore. I don't have the money to do that anymore. I go to the baths. That's about it. I'm about to do both. I'm flying to the West Coast. You still have an act with a donkey in Tijuana? <laughs> I'm going to San Francisco on a well-earned vacation. No shopping? Well, I may look for a few things for a couple of clients, but I've been so busy lately, I couldn't care less if I never see a piece of fabric or a stick of furniture as long as I live. I'm going to the club baths, and I'm not coming out till they announce the departure of TWA one week later. You'll never learn to stay out of the baths, will you? The last time Emily was taking the vapors, this big hairy number strolls in. So Emily says, I'm just resting. But the big hairy number says, I'm just arresting. It was the vice. You have to tell everything, don't you? Here, Emily, take this. Thanks, Sonny. You uh, live with your parents? Yeah, but it's all right. They're gay. <laughs> 
to Michael. Michael. And listen, what happened to Alan? Oh, he got terrible icks about having broken down on the telephone. He kept apologizing over and over and over. He had a big about face and turned into the old Alan in front of my very eyes. My ears. Ears. <laughs> well, obviously the cracked crab did not work Just out. Put that down if you don't want your hands slapped. I'm about to have some. Well, it's really very nice. I don't know why everybody has such an aversion to it. Sometimes you remind me of the Chinese water torture. Huh? Oh, no, 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 I take that back. Sometimes you remind me of the relentless Chinese water torture. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, baby, let's hear that sound. A drum beat and their eyes sparkle like Cartier's. Michael, I wonder where Harold is. Yeah, where is the frozen fruit? <laughs> Emery refers to Harold as the frozen fruit because of his former profession as an ice skater. She used to be the Vera Ruba Ralston of the Bosch circuit. Now on your feet, Bernard, come down. You know, if your mother could see you now, she'd have a stroke. You got a camera on you. Come on, Miss Montez, let's do it. Oh, my God, it's Lily Moore. Everyone three feet apart. That's probably Harold. Yep. No, no, it's the delivery boy from the bakery. Oh, thank God. Ask him if he's got any hot cross buns. Come on, Emery, knock it off. You can take her anywhere but out. You remind me of an old maid school teacher. You remind me of a chicken wing. I'm sure you meant that as a compliment. Thank you. Good night. Hey, Bernard, Birthday. do you remember that dance we used to do at Fire Island? That was in so far back, I think I forgot. I remember it. Oh, thank God. Go to the right one. Stay away from Emory's yeah, knees, they'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Look God, it's the geriatrics <laughs> rock cat right down. <laughs> well, listen, make room for Mama Rose. Mama Rose? Oh, my God. <laughs> Emory, where did you dream this up? Please, please. Get him up there, Emory. Got the memory of a lady <laughs> elephant. I'm going to get him up. Michael. What? I think your friend is here. Uh-uh. Alan. Oh, I, I thought you said you weren't coming. Sorry. Uh, we were just acting silly. Actually, when I called, I was in a phone booth just around the corner. Oh. My dinner party's not far from here. Uh, Emery was just showing us a silly dance. When I walked past you, downstairs door was open. So oh, I just came oh uh, this is Emery. Hello. Uh, everybody, this is Alan McCarthy. Uh, Alan, uh, counterclockwise. <coughs> Larry. Hi. Hello. Bernard. Hello. Oh, Emery. And Donald. Hello. And Hank. Uh, behind you. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I can't stay long, really. Well, you're here now, so stay. What would you like? Well, do you have any rye? Oh, I'm afraid I don't drink that anymore. Um, you'll have to settle for scotch or vodka or gin. Or beer. Yeah, scotch, beer. please. Fun. I'll, I'll get it. Oh, thank you. Well, I guess I'm the only beer drinker here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, uh, whose birthday is it? It's Harold's. Uh, Harold? He's not here yet. She's never been on time in her... He's never been on time in his life. Um, uh, Hank Allen is from Washington. Washington. Uh, we went to college together, Georgetown. Well, isn't that fascinating? Yeah, that's too strong. I'll put some water. No, no, it comes fine. Thanks. Fine. Well, Alan, are you in the uh, government then? Or? No, I'm. Uh, I'm a lawyer. What do you do? Oh, I teach school. Oh, I would have taken you for an athlete of some sort. It looks like you might play sports of some sort. <laughs> I'm no professional. I was on the basketball team in college, and I do play quite a bit of tennis. Oh, I play tennis too. Great game. Yes, it's great. <laughs> yes, it's a. Wonderful what? Game. Uh, what do you teach? Math. Math. Yeah, math. Well. Kind of makes you want to rush right out and buy a slide rule, doesn't it? Uh, excuse oh. me a second. Hang on, Alan, I'll be right back. <laughs> Come on, Emery, I'm going to need some help in the kitchen with dinner, and you're elected. I'm always elected. Well, you're a natural-born domestic, Emery. Said the African queen. You come on, too. You can fan me while I make the salad. Uh, right this out. way, Emery. Come on. Well, look, uh, why don't we all sit down oh, and, Sure. You know, hi. Oh, hi. I really feel terrible about barging in on you fellas this way. Have you been? Fine, thanks. What? And oh, you? that's oh. perfectly all right, Alan. Fine, thanks. Go ahead. Oh, you're married. What? I see you're married. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Hank's married. Well, do you have any kids? Yes, I have two. I have a, a, a boy nine and a girl seven. They're great kids, too. You should see my boy play tennis. He really uh, puts his dad in shape. <laughs> I'd better get some ice. I've got two kids, too, both girls. Oh, great. Yeah. How are the girls, Alan? Well, they're just sensational. Yeah. They're really something, those kids. God, I'm, I'm nuts about them. <laughs> Well, uh, Alan, uh, how long have you been married? Then? Nine years. Uh, Can you believe it, Mickey? No. Mickey used to go with my wife when we were all in school. Can you uh, believe that? Do you, uh, do you live in the city? Uh, yes, we do. I'm in the process of getting a divorce, so Larry and I are roommates at the moment. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. No, no, I understand. Anything. I think I'd like another drink if I may. Well, of course. What was it? I'll get it if I may. <laughs> what was that? Uh, excuse me. Uh, testy temperament out in the kitchen. Where do you know that guy from? What guy? That guy. Oh, I don't know. Around the bars. Oh, can I help you, Al? I, uh, I can't seem to find the scotch. Well, you've got it in your hand. 
course, how stupid of me. Why don't you let me do oh, that? thanks. Now? Was it water or seven? No, just make it straight over us. Uh, you see, Alan, I told you this wouldn't be a very good time at all. It really doesn't matter. Bedroom. I'm just going to finish this and go. But well, where could Harold be? Oh, you know Harold. You know how neurotic he is about going out in public? It takes him hours to get ready to go anywhere. Well, why is that? Why is what? Well, why does it take Harold hours to get ready before he can go out? Because she's a sick lady, that's why. <laughs> Uh, Alan, as I was about it to say... It really doesn't, doesn't matter, matter, Michael. Come on, bring your drink. I finished it. We'll make another and come on. Oh, thanks. Oh, don't mention it. Excuse us, we'll, uh, we'll be back in a minute. Sure, sure. Oh, it's right. He'll still be here. This way, Alan. This is a marvelous apartment. Well, it's too expensive. I work to pay rent. What are you doing these days? Nothing. Aren't you writing anymore? I haven't looked at a typewriter since I sold a very, very wonderful, very, very marvelous screenplay that never got produced. That's right. That's right. The last time I saw you, you were on your way to California, or was it Europe? <laughs> Hollywood, which is not in Europe, and which has nothing whatsoever to do with California. Well, I've never been there myself, but I would imagine it must be awful. Everyone must be terribly cheap. Uh, no, not everyone. <laughs> uh, Alan, I'd, li I'd like to try to explain about What's this. What's there to explain? Sometimes you can't invite everyone to every party, and some people take it personally, but I'm not... One of them, I should apologize for inviting myself. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. Your friends all seem like very nice guys. That uh, Hank is really a very attractive fellow. Yes, he is. We've got a lot in common. What's his roommate's name? Larry. What does he do? He's a commercial artist. I like Donald, too. Mm. The only one I didn't seem to care too much for was, what's his name, Emery? Yes, Emery. Well, I just can't stand that kind of talk. It just grates on me. What kind of talk, Alan? Oh, you know what I mean, his brand of humor, I suppose. Well, he can really be quite funny sometimes. I suppose so, if you find that sort of thing amusing. It's just that he seems like such a goddamn little pansy. I'm sorry I said that. I, I didn't mean to say that. That's such an awful thing to say about anyone, but... You know what I mean, Michael. You must admit he is effeminate. Yes, he is, a bit. A bit? Well, he's like a butterfly in heat. I mean, it's no wonder he was trying to teach you all a dance. He probably wanted to dance with you. Oh, come on, man. You know me. You know how I feel. You, your private life is your own affair. Uh, no, I don't know that about you. Well, I couldn't care less about what people do as long as they don't do it in public or try to force their ways on the whole damned world. Alan, what were you crying about on the telephone? <laughs> oh, I feel like such a fool about that. I could shoot myself for letting myself act that way. I'm so embarrassed I could die. But if you were genuinely upset, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. All I can say is, please forgive me for making such an ass of myself. But you must have been upset, or you wouldn't have said that you were... that you were upset and that you wanted to see... had to see me and talk to me. Can you forget it? Just pretend it never happened. I know I have, okay? Is something wrong between you and Fran? Listen, I've really got to go. What are you doing in New I'm York? I'm dreadfully late for dinner, Michael. Who's dinner? Where are you going? Is this the loop? Yes. Excuse me. What's going on in here? Oh, Mary, don't ask. <laughs> oh, hey, why don't you come and join us? Well, now, that's an interesting suggestion. Whose idea was that? Well, mine. He means in the conversation. Where are the rest of the wine glasses? Well, now, Mama, I was working as hard as I can. Well, they have to be told everything. Can't let them out of your sight. I thought maybe you were abiding by the agreement. But we have no agreement. We did. You did. I never agreed to anything. Uh, yeah, to your health. Up yours. Up my health? Where's the gent? In the gent's room. Now, look. If you can hang on for five more minutes, he's about to leave. Well, at last. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Harold. Happy birthday to you. Who the hell are you? She's Harold's present for me, and she's early. And that's not even Harold, you idiot. <laughs> well, you said whoever answered the door. But not until midnight. He's supposed to be a midnight cowboy. <laughs> he is a midnight cowboy. He looks like a William Inge play to me. Not until midnight, and you're supposed to sing to the right person, for Christ's sakes. I told you, Harold has very, very tight, tight, black, curly hair. This number's practically bald. Ooh. Thank you, and fuck you. Well, it's a good thing I didn't open the door. Not that tight and not that black. Uh, hey, look, Emmy, I forgot. And besides, I want to get to the bars by midnight. Oh, he's a class act all the way around. What do you mean, get to the bars? Sweetie, I paid you for the whole evening, remember? <laughs> well, I hurt my back during my exercises, and I want to get to bed early tonight. Mm. Are you ready for this one? <laughs> oh, that's too bad. What happened? I lost my grip doing my chin-ups, and I fell on my heels and twisted my back. You shouldn't wear heels when you do chin-ups. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't do chin-ups. I have a weak grip to begin with. No weak grip. And in my day, it used to be called a limp wrist. <laughs> who can remember that far back? Who was it who always used to say, you show me Oscar Wilde in a cowboy suit, and I'll show you a gay caballero. I don't know. Who was it who always used to say that? I don't know. Somebody. Well, what does your card say? Here, you read it. 
Dear Harold, bang, bang, you're alive, but roll over and play dead. Happy birthday, Emerald. Oh, Sheer poetry, Emmy. And oh. in your usual good taste. Yes, and so conservative of you to have resisted a sign in Times Square. Cheese it. Here comes the socialite nun. God damn it, shut up. Well, I'm off, Michael. Thank you for the drink. You're entirely welcome, Alan. See you tomorrow. No, no, I think I'm going to be awfully busy. I may even go back to Washington. Oh, I see. Got a heavy date in Lafayette Square? What? Emery. Forget it. Oh, or uh, are you Harold? No, he's not Harold. He's for Harold. Oh. Goodbye, Hank. It was awfully nice meeting you. Same here, Alan. If we get to Washington, I'd like you to meet my wife. Oh, Good. that'd be fun, wouldn't it, Hank? Yes, I'd love to meet him. <coughs> Her. I have such a problem with pronouns. How many S's are there in the word pronoun? How'd you like to kiss my ass? That's got two or more S's in How'd it. How'd you like to blow me? What's the matter? Your wife got locked you up? I get... Oh, Emery. Hey, cowboy, would you mind waiting over there with the gifts? Get some. Oh, well, Harold, happy birthday. You're just in time for the floor show, which, as you see, is on the floor. Uh, hey, you, cowboy, this is Harold. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Harold, happy birthday to you. <laughs> What's so fucking funny? Life. Life's a goddamn laugh riot. You remember life? You're stoned. Happy birthday, Harold. You're stoned and you're late. You were supposed to arrive at this location at approximately 8.30-9 o'clock. What I am, Michael, is a 32-year-old, ugly, pockmarked Jew fairy. And if it takes me a while to pull myself together, and if I smoke a little grass before I get up the nerve to show my face to the world, it's nobody's goddamn business but my own. And how are you this evening? Happy birthday, Hallie. What happened to you? Don't ask. Your lips are turning blue. You look like you've been rimming a snowman. That piss-elegant coo is hit me. Careful, Amory. That kind of talk just makes him so nervous. Who is she? Who was she? Who does she hope to be? Who knows? Who cares? His name is Alan McCarthy. Do forgive me for not formally introducing you. Not the famous college chum. Do a figure eight on this ice cube. <laughs> well, 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 I finally get to meet dear old Alan after all these years. And in black tie, too. Is this my surprise from you, Michael? I think Alan's the one who got the surprise. And if you'll notice, he's absolutely speechless. I hope she's in shock. She's a beast. Is it his birthday, too? <laughs> he's your surprise, Hallie. Speaking of beasts... From me to you, darling, how do you like him? Well, I suppose he has an interesting face and body, but it turns me right off because he can't talk intelligently about art. Yeah, ain't it a shame? I could never love anyone like that. Never? Who could? I could and you could. That's who could. <laughs> Mary, she's gorgeous. She may be dumb, but she's all yours. <laughs> In affairs of the heart, there are no rules. Where'd you ever find him? Ray knew where. <laughs> Ray is Ray Clark, R-A-E. She's Emery's dyke friend who sings in his place in the village. She wears pinstripe suits and bills herself Miss Ray Clark, songs tailored to your taste. Ray's a fabulous chanteuse. Uh -huh. I love the way she does down in the depths on the 90th floor. The faggot national anthem. In my pet pie, and a down. All I can say is thank God for Miss Ray Clark. I think my presence a super surprise. I'm so thrilled to get it, I'd kiss you, but I don't want to get blood all over me. Oh, look at my sweater. Where do you see your face? <laughs> Come on, Emery. Let's get you cleaned up. My sweater's ruined. Well, take one of mine in the bedroom. Well, the one on the floor is by Cuna. Come on, you'll feel better after I bathe your face. Cheer up. Things could get worse. I did and I did. Just another birthday party with the folks. <laughs> Here's a cold bottle of Fully Frise I bought especially for you, kiddo. Pussy cat. All is forgiven. Oh. You can stay. Uh, no, you can stay, but all is not forgiven. Cheers. I didn't want it like this, Hallie. Who asked Mr. Wright to celebrate my birthday? There are no accidents. And who asked him? Guilty again. Always got to have your crutch, haven't you? Well, I'm not leaving. Nobody ever thinks completely of someone else. They always please themselves. They always cheat, if only a little bit. Well, why is he just sitting there with his hands over his ears? I think he has a nick. Alan, can I get you something to drink? Uh, how can he hear you dope with his hands over his ears? He can hear every word. In fact, he wouldn't miss a word if it killed him. What did I tell you? I feel sick. I think I'm going to throw up. Say Sorry. that again, and I won't have to take my appetite depressant. Come on, the jars in here. There. Easy does it, one step at a time. There. Feel better? Oh, Mary, what would I do without you? I'm not ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille, nor will I be for the next two weeks. I'm gonna be sick. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, my God, he's after me again! No, 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 he's sick. Yeah, he's sick in the head. 
Here, Mary, put this sweater on. Oh, Mary, take me home. My nerves can't stand any more of this tonight. Turning on. <coughs> Anyone care to join me? Many thanks, no. <laughs> no, thank you. How about you, Tex? Yeah. I find the sound of the ritual alone utterly humiliating. Why do you make the smell poppers leave on your fingers? Why don't you get up and wash your hands? Michael, mm. I left the casserole in the oven. You can take it out any time. You're not leaving. I couldn't eat now, anyway. Well, I'm absolutely ravenous. I'm going to eat until I have a fat attack. I said you're not leaving. Having a cocktail this evening, are we, in my honor? It's your favorite dinner, Hallie. I made it myself. Who made the casserole? Well, I made the sauce. I made the salad. Well, oh, it doesn't mean you should... Girls, please. Please, what? Beware the hostile fag. When he's sober, he's dangerous. When he drinks, he's lethal. Attention must not be paid. I'm starved, Em. I'm ready for some of your Alice B. Toklas opium-baked lasagna. Are you really? <laughs> well, that makes me so happy. Maybe I'll just serve before I leave. You're not leaving! I'll help. I will, too. We don't need a nosebleed in that lasagna. Once you put that sauce on it, you won't be able to tell the difference anyway. Nobody's going anywhere. You are going to have schmertz tomorrow, you wouldn't believe. May I kiss the hem of your schmata, Dr. Freud? I don't understand. What are you talking about? He's working through his Oedipus complex sugar with a machete. Michael, is there any air spray? Hair spray? You're supposed to be holding his head, not doing his hair. Air spray, not air spray. There's a can of floral spray right on top of the jar. All right, thank you. Aren't you going to say if it was a snake it would have bitten you? That is something only your friend here would say. I'm turning on and you're just turning. I keep my grass in the medicine cabinet in the Band-Aid box. Somebody told me it's the safest place. If the cops arrive, you can always lock yourself in the bathroom and flush it down the john. Very cagey. <laughs> Makes more sense of where I was keeping it. An oregano jar in the spice rack. I kept forgetting and accidentally turning my hateful mother on with the salad. <laughs> but I think she liked it. No matter what meal she comes over for, even if it's breakfast, she says, let's have a salad. <laughs> hey, why'd you say that... Uh, I would say if it was a snake, it would have bitten you. Because I think that's what I would have said. Well, of course you would, baby. That's exactly the kind of remark your pint-sized brain thinks of. You are definitely the type who still moves his lips when he reads. And who sits in the steam room and says things like, hot enough for you. Oh, I don't use the steam room when I go to the gym. It's bad for you after workout, flattens you down. Oh, and after you've broken your back to blow yourself up like a poison dog. Yeah. You're right, Harold. Not only can he not talk intelligently about art, he can't even follow from one sentence to the next. But he's beautiful. He has unnatural, natural beauty. Not that that means anything. It doesn't mean everything. Keep telling yourself that as your hair drops out in handfuls. Uh, not that it's not natural for one's hair to recede as one reaches seniority. Not that those wonderful lines that have begun creasing our countenances don't make all the difference in the world because they add so much character. <laughs> Faggots are worse than women about their age. They think their lives are over at 30. Physical beauty is not all that goddamn important. Of course not. How could it be? It's only in the eye of the beholder. It's only skin deep, too. Don't forget that one. Oh, no, I haven't forgotten that one at all. It's only skin deep. And it's transitory, too. It's terribly transitory. I mean, how long does it last? 30 or 40 or 50 years at the most, depending upon how well you take care of yourself, and not counting, of course, that you might die before it runs out anyway. <laughs> oh, yes, it's too bad about this poor boy's face. It's tragic. He's absolutely cursed. How could his beauty ever compare with my soul? And although I've never seen my soul, I understand from my mother's rabbi that it's a knockout. I, however, cannot seem to locate it for a gander. And if I could, I'd sell it in a flash for some skin-deep, transitory, meaningless beauty. Forgive him, Father, for he know not what he do. <laughs> oh, my God, you kill me. Hmm? You don't know what side of the fence you're on. If somebody says something pro-religion, you're against them. If somebody denies God, you're against them. One might say you have some problem in that area. You can't live with it, and you can't live without it. Hot stuff coming through. One can murder you with very little effort. You hang on to that great insurance policy called the church. That's right. I believe in God. And if it turns out there isn't one, okay, nothing's lost. But if it turns out there really is, I'm covered. Harriet hypocrite. That's who you are. Right. I'm one of those truly rotten Catholics who gets drunk, sins all night, and goes to mass the next morning. Guilt or guilt. It all depends on what you think sin is. Would you just shut up your goddamn minty mouth and get back in the goddamn kitchen? Say anything you want. Just don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I suppose every has a point. <laughs> I only go to confession before I get on a plane. Do you think that God's power exists only at 30,000 feet? It must. 
the ground, I'm God. In the air, I'm just one more scared son of a bitch. I'm scared on the ground. Mm, me too. Hey, except when I'm high in powder up on acid. Well, is it bigger than a breadstick? He's lying down for a minute, Michael. How does the bathroom smell? Better. Before, it smelled like somebody puked. Now it smells like somebody puked in the gardenia patch. <laughs> How does the big hero feel? Will you lay off? Dinner is served. Oh. Emery, it was absolutely fabulous. I'd make somebody a good wife. I could cook, I could do an apartment, and uh, I could entertain. Kiss me quick, I'm Carmen. <laughs> One really needs castanets for that sort of thing. And a getaway car. Right. What are you having, big boy? Alan McCarthy and don't hold the mail. I can't keep up with you two. First you're mad at him, now he's bitching you. What gives? Never mind. What is it? Lasagna. <laughs> it, it looks like spaghetti and meatballs. All sort of flattened out. Yeah, it's been in the steam room. It has. It looks like spaghetti and meatballs, all sort of flattened out. Oh, yes, Harold, truly enviable. As opposed to you, who know so much about haute cuisine. Raconteur, gourmet, troll. It's good. You like it? Eat it. Stuff your mouth so you can't talk. Turning. Wine? Uh, no, thanks. Oh, go on, kiddo. Force yourself. Have a little vanity near to wash down all that depressed pasta. Sommelier, connoisseur, pig. Aren't you going to have any? No, my lip hurts too much to eat. Oh, I understand. If you put a knife under the bed, it cuts the pain. I understand. If you put a knife under your chin, it cuts your throat. Is anyone going to bring a plate into well? <laughs> the punching bag is now dissolved in the flow nightingale. Hank? I don't think Alan would have much appetite. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, correction. Ladies and ladies, I would like to announce that you have just eaten Sebastian Venable. Nice. Just in what? Not, not what, stupid, who? A character in a play, a fairy who got eaten alive. Yeah, I mean the chop chop variety. Jesus. <laughs> Did um, um, Edward Albee write that play? No, 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 no. Tennessee Williams. All right. Albee wrote Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? You dummy. I know that. I thought maybe he wrote the other one, too. Well, you made a mistake. So I made a mistake. That's right. You made a mistake. Well, what's the difference? You can't add. <laughs> <laughs> Edward who? How much did you pay for him? He was a steal. <laughs> It's a ham sandwich. Fifty cents any time of the day or night. King of the pig people. Would you like some more, Donald? Oh, no, thanks, Emery. It was very good, though. Did you like it? Yes. Oh, I'm not a steal. That cost twenty dollars. <laughs> more for not? No, thank you, Emery. Delicious, though, even if I did make it myself. Isn't anyone having seconds? I'm having <laughs> seconds and thirds and maybe even fifths. I'm absolutely desperate to keep the weight up. You're absolutely paranoid about absolutely everything. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you not tell me about it? You starve yourself all day living on coffee and cottage cheese so that you can gorge yourself at one meal. And then you feel guilty and moan and piss about how fat you are and how ugly you are. When the truth is, you're no fatter and no thinner than you ever are. Polly paranoia. Just great, Emery. Thank you. Connie casserole. No trouble at all. Oh, Mary, D.A. And this pathological lateness is downright crazy. Turning. Standing in front of a bathroom mirror for hours and hours before you can walk out onto the street. And then looking no different. After Christ knows how many applications, or Christ knows how many ointments, and salves, and creams, and that. I've got bad skin. What can I tell you? Who wouldn't after they deliberately take a pair of tweezers and deliberately mutilate their pores? No wonder you got holes in your face after the hack job you've done on yourself, year in and year out. You hateful sow. Yes, you got scars on your face. But they're not that bad. And if you'd leave yourself alone, you wouldn't have any more anymore to awarded yourself. You'd really like me to compliment you now for being so honest, wouldn't you? For being my best friend who will tell me what even my best friends won't tell me. Swan. <laughs> oh, and the pills. Harold has been gathering and storing and saving up barbiturates for the past year. Like a goddamn squirrel. Hundreds of nebutals, hundreds of seconds, all in preparation for and anticipation of the long winter of his death. Well, I'll tell you something, Hallie. When the time comes, you won't have the guts. It's not always like it happens in plays. Not all faggots bump themselves off at the end of the story. What you say may be true. Time will undoubtedly tell. In the meantime, you left out one detail. Oh? The cosmetics and astringents are paid for, the bathroom is paid for, the tweezers are paid for, and the pills are paid for. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Harold! Happy birthday to you! <laughs> Flat 
your candles, Mary, and make a wish. Blow out your candles, Laura. Oh, oh my God! God. There you go. Leave that mouth. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, we were there. Now you have to open your gifts, Harold. Do I have to open them here? Yes. Yep. Take this first. Take this first. Where's the card? What happened to the card? In here. From Larry. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's heaven. I love it, Larry. What is it? It's the deed to boardwalk. <laughs> Gay pop art. It's sensational, Larry. Did you do it? Yeah. Oh, it great. is super, Larry. It goes up the minute I get home. Good. I don't get it. You cruise Atlantic City or something? <laughs> Will somebody get him out of here? Oh, what a nifty sweater. Thank you, Hank. Well, you know, if you don't like it, you can take it back and exchange it for something else. No, I think this one's just nifty. Who wants cake? Everybody? Or none for me, please. Yeah, I'd just like to sleep on mine, thank you. <laughs> Bernard, how divine. Look, everybody, bejeweled knee pads. <laughs> Bernard, you're a kid. Let me see you. You all heard of Gloria de Haven and Billy de Wolves? Well, this here is Rosemary de Camp. I never missed the Rosemary de Camp movie. I never heard of her. Me neither. You see, Michael, not everybody spent their childhood in a movie house. Some of us played baseball and mowed the lawn. Well, I know who Rosemary de Camp is. Who would? It's a sense you wouldn't recognize a lawnmower or a baseball. Thank you, Michael. What? Oh. You're welcome. What is it, Harold? It's a photograph of him in a silver frame, and there's an inscription engraved and the date. Oh, what's it saying? Just something personal. Say, Bernard, what do you say we have a little music? Like, yeah, that's something. interesting. Yeah, I feel like dancing. Oh, something good and ethnic, Eric. Right? One of your specials. A military toe tap with sparklers? I don't do that at birthdays, only on the 4th of July. Come on, Michael. I only lead. Well, I can follow. Okay, come on. Come on, Tex, you're on. Oh, never mind. Wanna dance, Alan? Uh-oh, Yvonne the Terrible is back. <laughs> oh, hello, Alan. Feeling better? <laughs> this is where you came in. Excuse me, Larry. You're saying deep sigh off. Don't rush off in the heat of the day. Revolution complete. You missed the cake. And you missed the opening of the gift. But you're still in luck. You're just in time for the party game. Hey, everybody, game time. Why don't you just let him go, Michael? Oh, he can go if he wants to. But not until we play a little game. What's it gonna be, movie star Jim? No, it's too baggy for Alan to play. Okay. He wouldn't be any good at it. What about likes and dislikes? Yes. It's too much trouble to find pencils. And besides, Emery always puts down the same thing. He dislikes artificial fruit and flowers and coffee grinders made in the lamps, and he likes Mabel Mercer, Poodles, and All About Eve, the screenplay of which he will then recite verbatim. I put down other things sometimes. Like a tan out of season? I just always put down little Chi-Chi because I adore her so much. If one is of the masculine gender, a poodle is the insignia of one's deviation. You know why old ladies like poodles. Because they go down on them. They do not. Well, we could play B for Botticelli. We could play Spin the Botticelli, but we're not going to. What do you want to play, Michael? The truth game? Cute, Ellie. Or do you want to play murder? You all remember that one, don't you? Very cute. As I recall, they're similar. The rules are the same in both. You kill somebody. In affairs of the heart, there are no rules. Isn't that right, Harold? That's what I always say. Well, that's the name of the game. The affairs of the heart. I never heard of that one. Of course you have it, baby. I just made it up. Now, the affairs of the heart is a combination of the truth game and murder with a new twist. I can hardly wait to find out what that is. Mickey, I'm leaving. Stay where you are. Michael, let him go. He didn't really want to. If he did, he'd have left a long time ago. Or he wouldn't have come in the first place. Mickey, I don't feel well. My name is Michael. I am called Michael. You must never call anyone called Michael Mickey. Those of us who are named Michael get very nervous about it. If you don't believe me, just try it. I'm sorry, I can't think. You can think. What you can't do is leave. It's like watching an accident on the highway. You can't look at it, and you can't look away. I feel weak. You are weak. Much weaker than any you realize. Well, now, who's going to play with Alan and me? Everybody? I have no intention of playing. <laughs> Nor do I. Well, not everybody's a participant in life. There are those who just stand on the sidelines and watch. But well, what's the game? Simply this. We all have to call on the telephone the one person we truly believe we have loved. Oh, well, I'm not playing then. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Oh, you'd like me to, wouldn't you? You bet I would. I'd like to know who you'd call after all those fancy speeches I've been hearing lately. Who would you call? Would you call me? It sounds like that's how you say trouble in paradise. If there isn't, I think you'll be able to stir up some. And who would you call? Don't think I think for one minute it would be me or that one call would do it. 
You'd have to make several, wouldn't you? About three long distance, and God only knows how many locals. I'd hate to pay the bill. Quiet. Don't worry, Michael won't pay it either. Now, here's how it works. Well, I thought you said there were no rules. That's right, in affairs of the heart, there are no rules. It's the goddamn point system. Now, if you make the call, you get one point. If the person you're calling answers, you get two points. If somebody else answers, you only get one point. And if nobody answers at all, you're screwed. You're screwed if you make the call. You're a fool if you screw yourself. When you get the person you called on the line, if you tell them who you are, you get two more points. And then, if you tell them that you love them, you get a bonus of five more points. Hateful. And therefore, you can get as many as ten points and as few as one. You can get as few as none if you know how to work it. The one with the most points wins. Hank, let's get out of here. Well, now, did you hear that? <laughs> Just the two of you together? The pals, the guys, the buddy buddies? The he-men. I think Larry may have something to say about that. Emery. Mm -hmm. The duenna speaks. Well, now, who's going to play? Um, excluding Cowboy, who as a gift is neuter. And of course, Le Voyeur. Emery? Mm -hmm. Bernard? I don't think I want to play. Oh, come on, Bernard. Where's your fun-loving spirit? I don't think this game is fun. It's absolutely hateful. Hank, leave with me. Uh, you don't understand, Alan. I can't. You can, but I can't. Why, Hank, why can't you? Well, if he doesn't understand it, why don't you explain it to him? I'll explain it to him. I had a feeling you might. <laughs> Although I doubt that he'll understand. And that type refuses to understand that which they will not accept. They reject certain facts. And Alan is decidedly in the ostrich school of reality. Alan, Hank and Larry are lovers. Uh, not just roommates, bedmates, lovers. Michael. No man has a roommate every 30 years old. If they're not lovers, they're sisters. Ah, uh, Hank's the one who's over 30. You're pushing it. Hank? Yes, Alan, Larry is my lover. But you're married. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said the wrong thing. <laughs> Don't you love that quaint little idea? If a man is married, he's automatically heterosexual. Alan, Hank swings both ways, but with a decided preference. Well, now, who's going to make the first call? Emery. You go, Bernard. I don't want to. I don't want to either. I don't want to at all. There are no accidents. Then may I say that on your way home, I hope you will yourself over an embankment. Go on, call up Peter Dalbeck. That's who you'd like to call, isn't it? Who's Peter Dalbeck? The boy in Detroit whose family Bernard's mother has been a laundress for since he was a pickaninny. I work for them too, after school and every summer. It's always been a large order of hero worship. I think I've loved him all my life, but he never knew I was alive. Besides, he's straight. <laughs> then nothing ever happened between you. Oh, they finally made it. Mm -hmm. In the pool house one night after a drunken swimming party. <laughs> the right wine and the right music. There are damn few that aren't curious. It sounds like there's a lot of Lady Chatterley in Mr. Uh, Dahlbeck. Wouldn't you say, Donald? I've never been an O'Hara fan myself. And afterwards, we went swimming in the nude, in the dark, with only the moon reflecting on the water. Oh, Thomas Merton. It was beautiful. How romantic. And the next morning, you took his coffee and apple seltzer up to him on a tray? It was in the afternoon. Oh. I remember I was worried sick all morning about having to face him, but he pretended like nothing at all had happened. Oh, well, Christ, he must have been so drunk, he didn't remember a thing. <laughs> yeah, I was sure relieved. Odd how that works. Now, for ten points, get that liar on the phone. You know the number? Sure, he's back in Rose Point, living at home. He just got separated from his third wife. D A or B Y. You didn't even give it time to find out. Come on, Bernard, pick up a phone. You'll think of something. You know you want to call him. You know that, don't you? Well, go on. <laughs> Your curiosity's got the best of it. Go on. Go on. Hateful. <laughs> What's D A or B Y? Operator lingo for doesn't answer or busy. Hello. One point. Who's speaking? Mrs. Dalbeck. Oh, one point. It's Bernard, Francine's boy. Son, not boy. How are you? Good. Good. Oh, yes, fine. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Dalbeck, is Peter at home? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, shit. Um, no, no, it's nothing important. I just wanted to tell him that I was... And I love him. I've always loved him. I just wanted to tell him that I was sorry to hear about him and his wife. No points. My, my mother wrote me. Yes, yes, it is. It really is. Would you just tell him that I called and said I was very, very sorry to hear, and I hope they can get it straightened out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good night. Two points total. Terrible. Next. Are you all right, Bernard? Why did I call? Why did I do that? Where was he? Out on a date. Come on, Emery. Watch in. Can I have the phone number in the Bronx for a Delbert Botts, please? Oh, hey, Delbert Botts, how many can there be? Why did I do that? No, the residence number, please. Thank you. 
I wish information would stop calling me ma'am. <laughs> By all means, scribble all over my telephone. It's all for the little spit. Uh, like a lot of things, huh? Who in the hell is Delbert Botts? The one person I have always loved. Well, that's who you set to call, isn't it? That's right, Henry Board. How could you love anybody with a name like that? Yes, Emery, you couldn't love anybody with a name like that. It wouldn't look good on a place card. Would it, Alan? Well, I admit his name is not so good, but he's absolutely beautiful. At least he was when I was in school. Of course, I haven't seen him since, and he was about seven years older than I even then. Oh, well, Christ, you better call him quick before he dies. I've loved him ever since the first day I laid eyes on him, which was when I was in the fifth grade and he was a senior. And then he went away to college, and by the time he got out, I was in high school, and he had become a dentist. A <laughs> dentist? Yes. Delbert Botts, DDS. <laughs> he opened his office in a bank building. So you went and every tooth in your head pulled out, right? No, I just had my teeth cleaned, that's all. I shouldn't have done that. Bernard, will you shut up? And go take your boring sleep making egg somewhere else. Go. I remember I looked into his eyes the whole time, and kept wanting to bite his fingers. <laughs> well, it's absolutely mind boggling. <laughs> Phyllis Fallick. It absolutely boggles the mind boggling. Sarah Samaritan? I told him I was having my teeth cleaned for the junior senior prom for which I was in charge of decoration. I told him it was a celestial theme and I was cutting stars out of tin foil and making clouds from angel's hair and chicken wire. He couldn't have been less impressed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got angel's hair down my shirt once at Christmas time. <laughs> Why did that stuff itch? I told him I was going to burn incense in big pots. A white fog would float over the dance floor and it would look like heaven. Just like I'd seen in a Rita Hayworth movie. Can't remember the title. Well, the picture was called Down to Earth. Any kid knows that. It made tiny little cuts and increases my fingers. You know, it'd be terrible to get that... In... I'll be quiet. He was engaged to this stupid-ass girl named Lorraine, whose mother was truly super cunt. Oh, don't digress. <laughs> anyway, I was a wreck. <laughs> I mean, I was a total mess. I couldn't eat, sleep, stand up, sit down, nothing. Hardly finished cutting out the stars and making the clouds for the prom. So I called him on the telephone and asked him if I could see him alone. Clearly not the coolest of moves. He said okay and told me to come by his house. I was so nervous this time. My voice was shaking and my hands were unsteady. I couldn't even look at him. I just stared straight ahead in space and blurted out why I'd come. I told him I wanted him to be my friend. I said I never knew anyone I could talk to or tell everything to or trust. I asked him if he'd be my friend. You poor bastard. Shh. What did he say? He said he'd be glad to be my friend. That any time I wanted to see him or call him, to call him and he'd see me. And then he shook my trembling wet hand and I left on a cloud. Well, the ones you made yourself. And the next day I went out and bought him a gold-plated cigarette lighter and had his initials monogrammed on it. And I wrote him a card said from your friend Emery. 17 years old and already big with the gifts. Yep, cards too. And the night of the prom, I found out. Found out what? I heard two girls I knew giggling together. We were standing behind a goddamn corrugated cardboard Greek column I had borrowed from a department store and draped with yards and yards of goddamn cheesecloth. Oh, Mary, it takes a fairy to make something pretty. Don't digress. The girl that was telling the story said she heard it from her mother. And her mother heard it from Lorraine's mother. You see, Lorraine and her mother were not beside the point. Obviously, Della told Lorraine about my calling and about the gift, and pretty soon everyone at the dance had heard about it. They were all laughing and making jokes. Everyone knew I had a crush on Dr. Delbert Botts and that I asked him to be my friend. Well, what they didn't know was that I loved him. And that I'd go on loving him years after they'd all forgotten my funny secret. Well, I, for one, need an insulin injection. Call him. Don't, Emery. <laughs> Since when are you telling him what to do? What do I care? I'm pissed. I'll do anything three times. Don't you be sorry. Take my word for it. I said call him. What have I got to lose? Your dignity. That's what you've got to well, lose. Well, that's a knee slapper. Oh, I love your telling him about dignity when you allow him to degrade you constantly by Uncle Tommy you to death. He can do it, Michael. I can do it. You can't do it, all right? Isn't that discrimination? I don't like it from him, and I don't like it from me. I do it to myself, and I let him do it. Now, I let him do it because it's the only thing that to him makes him my equal. We both got the short end of the stick. I got a hell of a lot more than he did, and he knows that. So I let him, Uncle Tom me, just so that he can tell himself he's not a complete loser. How very considerate. It's his defense. You have your defense, Michael, but it's indescribable. You over here, polite little apologist from the liberal deep south. Mm? <laughs> You know why niggers have such big lips? 
Because they're always going... Christ, Michael. Then I can do without your goddamn spit all over my telephone, you Nelly coward! I may be Nelly, but I'm no coward, Michael. I'm sorry, Bernard. Forgive me. I will never say those things to you again. Be wise. He's busy? Lorraine is probably speaking to her mother. Oh, yes, Delbert married Lorraine. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't wait. You forfeit your turn. Well, you're not wasting any time. Who are you calling? Charlie. I refuse to forfeit my turn. It's my turn. I'm taking it. That's right, everybody. That's right. Don't miss that iceberg, honey. Hit it, goddammit. I want to smash up finale. God, I'm drunk. I've fallen down drunk, Nellie Queen. Well, that's the pot calling the kettle bed. I am not drunk. You cannot tell that I'm drunk. Donald! I'm not drunk, am I? I'm drunk. So am I. I'm a major drunk. Shut up and dial. I'm a major drunk of this or any other season. Don't you mean shut up and deal? It's ringing. It's no longer B.Y. Hello? One point. Who's speaking? Who? Dr. Dell. Two points. Dell, is this really you? <laughs> Nobody. You don't know me. You wouldn't remember me. I'm just a friend. A fallen down drunken friend. Hello? 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 He hung up. Three points total. You're winning. He said I must have the wrong party. He's right. We have the wrong party. We should be somewhere else. It's your party, Hallie. Aren't you having a good time? Simply fabulous. What about you? You having a good time, Emery? Are you having as good a time as you thought you would? If you're bored, Harold, we could sing happy birthday again to the tune of Hava Nagila. Not for all the tea in Mexico. My turn now. No, it's my turn to call Charlie. No, let me. Are you gonna call Charlie? Yeah, the score is three to two. Emery's favorite. Don't, Hank, don't you see Bernard was right? I want to, Larry. You'd be my eager guest. Is he gonna call Charlie for you? Charlie is all the people I cheat on Hank with. With whom I cheat on Hank? The butcher, the baker, the gangster. Right, baker. I love them all. And what Hank refuses to understand is that I've got to have them all. I'm not the marrying kind, and I never will be. Gypsy feet. Who are you calling? Jealous. Curious as hell. Uh-huh. And just a little bit jealous, too. Who are you calling? Did it ever occur to you that Hank might be doing behind your back what you do behind his? Oh, I wish to Christ he would. It would make life a hell of a lot easier. Who are you calling? Whoever it is, they're not sitting on top of the telephone. Hello? They must have been in the tub. 86. One point. I'd like to leave a message, please. Not in one point. Would you say that Hank called? Yes, it is. Oh, good evening. How are you? Oh, who the hell is that? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, the message is from my roommate, Larry. Would you just say that I called and... It's our answering service. Said I love you. You said it. You get five goddamn points for saying it. Hank, are you crazy? No, no, you didn't hear me incorrectly. That's just exactly what I said. Message is from my roommate Larry, and it's from me, Hank, and it's just as I said, I love you. Thank you. Seven points over. You're way ahead, Hank, baby. You're way ahead of everybody. Why, Hank? Why did you do that? Because I do love him, and I don't care who knows it. Don't say that. Why not? It's the truth. I can't believe you. Now, look here, Alan. I left my wife and family. I'm really that. not interested in hearing it. Sure you are. Go on, Hank. Let's tell him all about no, it. No, I don't want to hear it. It's disgusting. Well, some men do it for another woman. Well, I can understand that. That's normal. Well, it just doesn't always work out that way, Alan, no matter how much we might want it to. And God knows nobody ever wanted it to more than I did. I mean, I really and truly believed I was in love with my wife when I married her. It wasn't entirely my trying to prove something to myself. No, I did love her, and she loved me, but there was always that something there. You mean your attraction to your own sex? Yes. Always? Well, I don't know. I suppose so. I've known what I was since I was four years old. Everybody's always known it about you, Emery. I've always known it about myself, too. I don't know when it was I first started admitting it to myself. For a long time, I either labeled it something else or... Denied it completely. Christ, was I drunk last night. Yeah. But there did come a time when I just couldn't lie to myself anymore. You see, Alan, I thought about it, but I never did anything about it. I think the first time I ever really did anything about it was during my wife's last pregnancy. We were living near Hartford in the country. She and the kids still live there. Anyway, there was a um, teacher's meeting here in New York, and my wife didn't feel up to the trip, so I said it would come alone. And that day on the train, I started to think about it. And think about it, think about it, think about it. The whole trip, I didn't think about anything else. And Within 15 minutes after I'd arrived, I picked up a guy in the men's room of Grand Central Station. Jesus. I'd never done anything like that in my life before, and I was scared to death. But he turned out to be a nice fellow. 
Haven't seen him since, of course. And the funny thing is, I can't remember his name anymore. Anyway, after that, it got easier. Practice makes perfect. And then not too long after that, Larry was in Hartford, and we met at a party that my wife and I had come into town for. And then your real troubles began. That was nearly two years ago. Why am I always the goddamn villain in the piece? If I'm not thought of as a happy homewrecker, I'm an impossible son of a bitch to live with. Oh. Guilt turns to hostility. Isn't that right, Michael? It goes to your trees, isn't it, You know, I'm fed up to my teeth with everybody feeling so goddamn sorry for poor shat upon Hank. Oh, Larry, everyone knows you're free to fickle. Look, I've never made any promises, and I don't intend to. It's my right to leave my sex life without answering to anybody. Hank included. And if those terms are not acceptable, then we must not live together. Numerous relations is a part of the way I am. You don't have to be gay to be wanton. By the way I am, I don't mean being gay. I mean my sexual appetite. And I don't think of myself as a wanton. No, Emery, you're the most promiscuous person I know. I'm not promiscuous at all. Oh, well, not by choice, by design. <laughs> who'd go to bed with a flaming little sissy like you? Michael. <laughs> who'd make a pass at you? I'll tell you who. Nobody. Except some fugitive from the Braille Institute. Why do you let him talk to you that way, huh? Physical beauty isn't everything. Thank you, Quasimodo. Do you know what it's like living with a goddamn Gestapo? I can't breathe without getting a third degree. Larry, it's your turn. No, I can't take all this. Let's be faithful and never look at another person routine because it just doesn't work. You want to promise that? Fine. Then you do it and you stick to it. But if you have to promise it, as far as I'm concerned, nothing finishes a relationship faster. Give me Librium or give me meth. Yeah, freedom, baby. Freedom. You gotta have it. It just doesn't work any other way. Oh, and the ones who swear their undying fidelity are lying. Well, most of them, 90% of them anyway. They cheat on each other constantly and lie through their teeth. Well, I'm sorry, I can't be like that, and it drives Hank up the wall. There is that 10%, Larry. Well, the only way that stands a chance is with some sort of an understanding. Well, I've tried to go along with that. Oh, come I on. I agree to an agreement. Your agreement. What agreement? A menage. The lover's agreement. Oh, yeah. Now, look, I know a lot of people think that's the answer. They don't consider that cheating, but it's not my style. Well, I certainly never wanted it. Oh, well, then who suggests it's a compromise? Exactly. exactly. And you agreed. I didn't agree to anything. You agreed to your own proposal and informed me that I agreed. I don't understand. What's a menage? A menage a trois. Two's company, three's a menage. Well, it works for some. Well, I'm not one for group therapy. I can't relate to anything or anyone that way. I'm old-fashioned. I like them all, but I like them one at a time. Uh, did you like Donald as a single side attraction? Yes, I did. So did I, Larry. Did you tell him? <laughs> no. It was obvious from the moment you walked in the door. What was this song and dance about never having met and having seen each other? It was true. We saw each other at the baths and mm -hmm. went to bed together, but we never spoke a word. And we never knew each other's names. You had better luck than I do. If I don't get arrested, my trick announces on departure that he's been exposed to hepatitis. One more shot of gamma globulin, and my ass will look like a pair of colanders. Well, in the spring, a young man's fancy turns to a fancy young man. Well, don't look at me that way. You've been playing footsie with the blue book all night. I think he was trying to show you what's good for the gander is good for the gander. That's right. Oh, well, I suppose you'd like the three of us to have a go at it. Well, at least it would be together. Oh, that point alludes well, me. Well, what kind of an understanding do you want? Respect for one another's freedom. With no need to lie or pretend. Hank, in my own way, I love you. But you've got to understand that even though I do want to go on living with you, that sometimes there may be others. Now, I don't want to flaunt it in your face, and I know if it ever happens, I'll never mention it to you. But if you ask me, I'll tell you. Now, I don't want to hurt you, but I'm not going to lie to you. If you ever want to know anything about me... He gets points. What? He said it. He said, I love you to Hank. He gets the bonus. He didn't call him. Oh, he called him. He just didn't use the telephone. But he doesn't get any points. He gets five. He didn't use the goddamn telephone. He didn't get a goddamn thing. Hank, it's for you. Why don't you take it in the bedroom? Hello? One point. Hello, Hank? Two points. This is Larry. Two more points. For what it's worth. I love you. Five points bonus. I'll try. I will too. That's ten points total. Larry's the winner. Well, that wasn't as much fun as I thought it would be. The game isn't over yet. Your turn, Alan. Pick up the telephone, Buster. Don't. You keep up this. You don't have to, Alan. You don't have to. Emery, I'm sorry for what I did before. Don't forget it. Forgive us our trespasses. Christ, now you're both joined the goddamn hip. You can decorate his house for him, Emery, and he can get you out of jail the next time the vice arrests you on a moral's charge. Who are you going to call, Alan? 
Can't think of anyone. Well, maybe you need a minute to think. Is that it? I believe this will be the final round. Aren't you going to call him on Michael? How could he? He's never loved anyone. No matter how you figure, it's tough to be a nigger, but it's tougher to be a Jew. My God, Michael, you're a charming host. Michael doesn't have charm, Donald. Michael has counter charm. Uh, Larry, are you going somewhere? Yes, you're going to have to excuse me. <laughs> you almost the end of the game. Well, you'll have to tell me how it comes out. I never reveal an ending. And no one will be reseated during the climactic revelation. Well, with any luck, I won't be back till it's all over. Well, what do you suppose is going on in there? Hmm, Alan? What do you suppose Larry and Hank are doing in there? Hmm? Shooting marbles? Whatever they're doing, they're not hurting anyone. And they're minding their own business. And you mind yours, Harold. I'm warning you. Are you now? Are you warning me? Me? I'm Harold. I'm the one person you don't warn, Michael, because you and I are a match, and we tread very softly with each other because we both play each other's game too well. I know this game you're playing. I know it very well, and I play it very well. You play it very well, too, but you know what? I'm the only one who's better at it than you are. I can beat you at it, so don't push me. I'm warning you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a goddamn lab riot. Isn't he funny, Alan? Or, or as you might say, isn't he amusing? <laughs> He's an amusing faggot, isn't he? Or as you might say, freak. And that's what you called Emery, wasn't it? A freak? A pansy? Oh, my, what an antiquated vocabulary you have. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't say sodomite or pederast. <laughs> you better let me bring you up to date. Now let me think a minute. Uh, well, now this isn't so new, but it might be new to you. Do you know the term closet queen? You know what that means? You know what it means to be in the closet? Don't, Michael. It won't help to explain what it means. But Johnny knows what it means. He knows very, very well what a closet queen is, don't you, Alan? Michael, if you are insinuating that I'm homosexual, I can only say that you're mistaken. Am I? What about Justin Stewart? What about Justin Stewart? You were in love with him. That's what about him. And that's what you're going to call. Justin and I are very good friends. That's all. Unfortunately, we came to a parting of the ways, and that was the end of the friendship. We have not spoken in years, and I most certainly will not call him now. According to Justin, the friendship was quite passionate. What do you mean? I mean that you slept with him in college. Several times. That's not true. Several times. Once? That's youth. Twice a phase, maybe. Several times you like That's it. That's not true. It is true. Because Justin Stewart is a homosexual. He comes to New York occasionally. He calls me. I've taken him to parties. Larry's had him once. I've slept with Justin. And he's told me all about you. But he told you a lie. You were obsessed with Justin. It's all you can talk about. Morning, noon, and night. You began it this evening upstairs about Hank. What an attractive fellow he was, and all the rest of that transparent crap. He is an attractive fellow. What's wrong with saying so? Would you like to join him and Larry in the bedroom? I said he was attractive, that's all. How many times did you have to say it? And how many times did you have to say it about Justin? What a good swimmer he was. What a good tennis player he was. What a good body he had. How bright he was. How amusing he was. How the girls were all mad about him. What, what close friends you were. We were. We were. We were very close, very good friends. That's all. It was obvious. And when you did it in front of Fran, it was downright embarrassing. Even she must have had her doubts about you. Justin lied. If he told you that he lied, and it is a lie, a vicious <laughs> lie. He'd say anything about me now to get even because he could never get over the fact that I dropped him. But I had to. I had to because he told me all about himself. He told me that he wanted me to be his lover. And I told him that he made me sick. I told him that I pitied him. You ended the friendship, Alan, because you couldn't face the truth about yourself. Oh, you could go on sleeping with Justin as long as he lied to himself, and you lied to yourself, and you both dated girls and labeled yourselves men and called yourselves just fond friends. But Justin finally had to be honest about the truth, and you couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. And so you destroyed the friendship and your friend along with it. No. Justin could never understand what he had done wrong and made you drop him. He blamed himself. Uh, he did, that is, until he discovered who he was and what he was. But to this day, he remembers the treatment, the scars he got from you. No! Pick up this phone and call Justin. Call him and apologize. And tell him what you should have told him 12 years ago. No, he lied. Not a word is... Call him! Very well, I'll dial. You're so helpful. Give it to me.
It's Alan. Two points. Yes, yes, it's me. Is that just any? You sound surprised. I should hope to think he would be after 12 years. Two more points. No, no, I'm in New York. I, uh, I won't explain now. I just called to tell you that... Well, I just called to tell you that I'm here... Oh, I love you! God damn it, I love you! And I love you. Five points, bonus. Ten points, jackpot. I love you and I beg you to forgive me. Give me the telephone. Justin, did you hear what that son of a bitch said? Fran? <laughs> well, of course, I knew it was you. How are you? <laughs> Fine. Yeah, yeah, me too. Fine. Yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, he told me all about it. Now, don't thank me, please. Um, look, I'll, I'll put him back on the line. Give my love to the kids. Darling, I'll catch the first plane I can get. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sorry, too. I love you very much. Thank you, Michael. Who won? It was a tie. Now it's my turn. And ready or not, Michael, here goes. You are a sad and pathetic man. You're a homosexual and you don't want to be, but there's nothing you can do to change it. Not all your prayers to your God, not all the analysis you can buy in the years you've got left to live. You may very well one day be able to know a heterosexual life, if you want it desperately enough, if you pursue it with the fervor with which you annihilate. But you will always be homosexual as well. Always, Michael. Always. Till the day you die. <laughs> Friends. Oh, thanks for the nifty party. And the super gift. It's just what I needed. Bernard? Thank you. Will you get him home? Worry about her, I'll take care of everything. Donald, good to see you. Good night, Harold, see you again sometime. Yeah, how about a year from Shavuos? Come on, Tex, let's go to my place. <sighs> Are you good in bed? Well, I'm not like the usual hustler you meet. I, I try to show a little affection. It keeps me from feeling like such a whore. Oh, Michael, thanks for the laughs. Call you tomorrow. Come on, Bernard. Time to go home. Why did I call, Emery? Why did I do that? Come on. <clears throat> You're a heavy mother. Thank you, Michael. Good night, Donald. Bye, Emery. Bernard. Come on. Why? It's all right, Bernard. It's all right. I'm gonna fix you some coffee and everything's gonna be all right. Come on. Michael. <laughs> Michael. 
if we could just not hate ourselves so much. <laughs> That's it, you know? If we could just learn not to hate ourselves quite so very much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Inconceivable as it may be, you used to be worse than you are now. <laughs> Maybe with a lot more work, you'll be able to help yourself some more if you try. Huh? Who was it? <laughs> Who was it who always used to say, you show me a happy homosexual, <laughs> and I'll show you a gay corpse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who was it who always used to say that? How dare you come on with that holier than thou attitude with me? With a lot more work than I try. Indeed, you got a long run of hope before you're perfect, you know. No, I never said I didn't. And while we're on the subject, I think your analyst is a quack. Oh, well, earlier you said he was a prick. That's right, he's a quack prick. Oh, or a prick quack, whichever you prefer. Harold was right. You'll never change. Come, 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 come back, Donald. Come back, Shane. Oh. I'll come back when you have another anxiety attack. I need you. <laughs> Just like Mickey Mouse needs Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just like Donald Duck needs. Minnie Duck. <laughs> Nikki needs Donnie. My name is Donald. I am called Donald. Don't you must never call anyone called Don't. Donald. Donnie! Oh, X. X, X, terrible X. Oh, tomorrow's going to be an Ick Pack day. <laughs> it's going to be a bad day at Black Rock. A day of nerves, nerves, and more nerves. You suppose there's any possibility of just burning this room? Why do you think he stayed, Michael? Why do you think he took all of that from you? There are no accidents. He was dying to get killed. He was begging for somebody to let him have it. He got he you could have been telling the truth. Justin could have lied. Who knows? What time is it? It seems like it's day after tomorrow. Well, it's early. What does life hold? Where are you going? Well, the bedroom is occupied. I don't want to sleep anyway. So I've tried to walk off some of this booze. If I went to bed now, when I woke up, they had to put me in a padded cell. <laughs> Not that that's where I don't belong. And there's a midnight mass at St. Malachy's. All the theater people go there. I guess I'll walk over and catch it. Oh, pray for me. Maybe they'll be gone when I get back. I will be. Just as soon as I knock off this bottle of brandy. Will I see you next weekend? Unless you have other plans. No. Michael? Did he ever tell you why he was crying on the phone? What it was he had to tell you? It must have been that he left Fran. Or maybe it was something else. He changed his mind. Maybe so. I wonder why he left her. Well, as my father said to me when he died in my arms, I don't understand any of it. I never did. Turn the lights out when you go, will you?